and welcome to the special edition of Tech 24 out of Tallinn, Estonia, the world's first e-nation. Estonia is often hailed as the most digitally advanced society in the world. Since its independence from the Soviet bloc 28 years ago, this small Baltic state has transformed itself into an e-nation with 90% of government services online. Internet access is even considered a basic human right and is enshrined in the Constitution. In a tweet, the president of Estonia recently called attention to the country's high proportion of unicorns or companies valued over $1 billion compared to the country's population. Estonia is already known as the birthplace of Skype, one of its four unicorns, along with Playtech, Taxify, and TransferWise. After London, Paris, Berlin, and Silicon Valley, Tallinn seems to be the new land of opportunity for entrepreneurs. Let's meet with some people who have decided to set up their business here in the Estonian capital. Hi, I'm Ty Chris, and welcome to my office here in Tallinn. Forty computer engineers from across five countries work in this 500 meter squared office. They're the team behind the startup OnOff, an application that allows you to have multiple numbers for one mobile phone. First of all, I thought to myself, we need to find a country, not just where the engineers are very good, but where they know how to produce the kind of technology that I want to make. So clearly I had to go to a country where the workforce is cheaper to create a more effective product and so become more competitive. And finally, we're based here in the Silicon Valley of Europe. A hub of technological ingenuity whose spirit is embodied by one place in particular, the Teleskivi Creative Center, a former Soviet industrial complex now home to startups from all over the world, including Chile, China, Canada and Italy. They operate from this co-working space known as Lift 99. Youssef, a Moroccan software engineer, came here from Berlin six months ago to develop a virtual reality startup aimed at allowing anyone to create their own VR experience. It's transformed his project. In one year in Berlin, I could test two methods, which wasn't what I wanted. Since moving to Estonia, I could test all of the methods that I hadn't gone through. Due to its efficiency and supportiveness, this tech community is a tight-knit one. So far, 340 companies have received what's called startup status. This grants them the right to apply for a startup visa or temporary residence permit in Estonia. The startup visa is just one of the ways people can bring their company here. E-residency allows you to be a digital citizen without setting foot in Estonia. Then there is the digital nomad visa, which is being launched here in January and differs from the startup visa. Startup Estonia is a government initiative which works to support and encourage the country's startup ecosystem. The main difference is that the digital nomad visa gives you a right to just come here for a brief amount of time, but you can also continue traveling after that. But with the startup visa, we see that people actually commit themselves to at least a couple of years in Estonia. They want to benefit from the community and then get the contacts and maybe scale out. As Estonia looks to attract more and more international entrepreneurs, it now has to respond to new challenges. How to ensure that the necessary infrastructure is in place for those who choose to up sticks and move here. The eEstonia project aims to make the government more efficient and more transparent. Every single citizen here has a secure digital identity, enabling them to file their tax returns, check their medical records, and vote. Estonians can do pretty much everything online, apart from marrying, divorcing, and buying a house. Let's meet with one of the founding fathers of this project. Liner Vic, thank you so much for joining us here on Tech24. How did the idea of creating the world's first e-government arise back 28 years ago? It all started with necessity. Estonia has just at that time regained its independence from Soviet Union and we saw a technological opportunity to make public administration and government work more efficiently. It was just efficiency gains we were seeking for and it came from necessity. We were not able financially to maintain the public administration and bureaucracy as we know in Europe. And now how did you gain people's trust? 
trust can be gained with an interaction. As we say often that it takes 10,000 hits in golf to become uh, somebody who knows how to hit. It takes 10,000 interactions or emails to gain a trust. It starts also with non-formal trust, which means that municipalities or government is responding to emails. The public services and information is transparently online. And when people gradually start using it, it also increases the trust level. And now the personal data of 1.3 million Estonians is now stored in the government cloud. How do you ensure uh, the security of all this data? We uh, have a distributed architecture for the digital government, which is on top of that highly cryptic. And all the data exchange and all the services which we create are carried out through the common secure data exchange layer, which we call in Estonia X-Road. And this ensures that the data of the citizens and businesses is securely stored in government. On other angle, not only that we carry out continuous digital security tests and we certificate our systems, it's also extremely important that all citizens can see what government knows about me and how government is using data about me. So we have not a big brother controlling society, but rather we have a small brother, which is citizens, who can have a full control over what government is doing with their data. Now, you say that you're creating a, an e-government for everyone, an e-nation for everyone, but what about citizens who don't want to give uh, their identity and have their personal data stored in the cloud? Can they still function in a society where everything is digitized? We need to be available and accessible for everybody. However, we need also to understand that uh, it's more efficient and convenient for people also to use digital services. Let me give you one example. When we declare our taxes online, then the tax returns, when I do it digitally, I get it back virtually in a couple of days. If I do it on paper, which I can also do, it will be stored and it will be processed only when the tax declaration period is over and I get my returns back after the paper document is processed because it takes more time. And last but not least, parliamentary elections are set to take place this March with about 50% of Estonians that are set to use the e-voting system. Some specialists are worried about security breaches. What do you say to that? Internet voting in one country, say, for example, referendums in Switzerland, using electronic voting system in the United States, or internet voting in Estonia are very different compared to each other. It's very difficult to compare them to each other. In Estonia, the system is built around the digital identity card, individual certificates, and centrally coordinated approach, which ensures a much higher levels of security. And despite the fact that there is a theoretical possibility to intrude to one person's vote. You can't undermine the total elections. Linarvik, thank you so much for that. And it's time for our Test 24 segment of the week. And Dan and Jay Kattelkar is here to tell us just what it's all about to be an e-Estonian. At the heart of Estonia's e-governance is this system called XROAD, which essentially is a digital platform that connects individual databases. This ensures privacy and an efficient transfer of information. Now, one of its biggest advantages is it that it saves plenty of time. How do you access this XROAD uh, platform? It's through a digital ID card that's issued to every Estonian citizen and resident. To talk more about this card and how it works, I'm now joined by Tobias Koch, who is the spokesperson of eEstonia. Uh, could you tell us how this card works? You have um, a physical card uh, that is issued by the Estonian government, by the police and border guard. And with the help of this card, you can lock into information systems um, and also actually give digital signatures. This could be now ID card based, 
but also based on the mobile ID. So you can actually also use your mobile phone in order to access public services. This is actually my, my ID card. So I'm plugging the card into the computer. There's an integrated smart card reader. And with the help of the smart card reader, I can now go to the state portal, which is ASD.ee. Um, and there, if I want to do get access to confidential information, I of course need to authenticate who I am. So just like going to the office of the authority and showing my ID card so that people know that's really me. And what services can be accessed uh, through this card? What you can do here is actually you can do everything from establishing a business. You can uh, request a childbirth allowance, for example. You can um, also uh, check your, your uh, education register, like what kind of information is accessible about you there. You can change your address, a very practical thing that you need to do every time you move. So that's very, very easy through that environment. But also, and this is now separate from the state portal, is that you can actually vote electronically. Okay, thank you, Tobias, for your time. Yeah, thank you for coming. Now, one of the most important features of this system is that it ensures data privacy and data integrity. Now, this is done through the so-called PKI system, which is the public key infrastructure system, and there's also a data protection inspectorate. So if a citizen or a resident finds that there has been some violation of uh, data, then he or she can complain to this authority. And there's an additional layer in the form of blockchain technology, which it again ensures more data integrity. To know more about it, we are now joined by a representative from Guard Time. How does blockchain technology help in ensuring data integrity? So the way block KSI blockchain uh, works is that a user of the services uh, has some kind of data which it wants to protect. It hashes a data. It can be, for example, a medical record. It, the hash, which is a digital fingerprint of the data, is linked with the KSI blockchain. And the user gets in return a token which can be used to independently and continuously verify the integrity of the data, the signing time of the data, and the signing entity of data. Aita, well, that's how you say thanks in Estonian. Back to you, Julia. That brings us to the end of this special edition of Tech24 out of Tallinn, Estonia, but do stay with us here on France 24.